Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are talking about chapter 15, okay? So today we are talking about chapter 15, uh, period cost application. Sorry, um, I'm, uh, I'm sick. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm not able to uh, have the uh, in-class lecture. So I have to do this online recorded this lecture. And you would notice that I have to keep drinking some water. Um, so uh, please um, bear with me on that. So uh, chapter 15 is about uh, period costing applications. Okay, period cost applications. So, uh, so far we have done a lot of cost. They are product cost, right? A lot of the situations we are dealing with product cost, we are dealing with manufacturing overhead, right? And this is time we switched to period cost. Okay, so uh, we need also uh, allocate period cost, okay? We learned a lot about allocate manufacturing overhead cost to products, right? Um, so we also need to allocate period cost. So um, there are different um, cost method, single versus dual rate, okay? Single method versus dual rate method. Uh, just uh, from the, um, the, the name of the method, you can see that uh, for the single rate cost method, you only need to calculate one rate. For the dual rate cost method, you have to calculate two rates, one for variable cost pool, the other one for the fixed cost pool. And then um, in the business, we also have uh, the situation that you have um, support divisions, right? So this divisions does not generate revenues, um, but their job is to support the productive divisions, okay? So in that case, how you're gonna allocate the cost incurred on the support division to the productive division? So there are different methods, uh, direct, step down, uh, reciprocal methods. And then the last, we're gonna talk about the common cost, okay? Um, when certain um, product share a common cost, how would, you, how would you allocate that cost to different products? So why do we have to allocate the period cost? Even though this allocation um, it's just the approximate allocation, right? Um, <clears throat> we need to um, provide the information for the external parties, right? So we want to make sure we match uh, the revenues from each productive division, the productive division against their expenses, right? So a revenue expenses matching principle um, from the um, Financial accounting report, financial reporting perspective, right? Um, and also, um, each division, okay, they are, they have their own managers. Um, there are per performance evaluation considerations, right? So, <clears throat> the uh, managers, employees, um, they need to, they need to be responsible for that expenses, right? They are supposed to uh, uh, to bear, right? Um, so the four criteria, okay, for this uh, period cost allocation, um, the cause and the effect, right? So basically, um, you know, you incur the cost and you see a result. Right, so does this cost benefit? This cost on the supporting division benefit 
that product productive dividend? If the answer is yes, then there is a cause and effect link, right? And uh, you also want to consider fairness or equity, right? Um, when you allocate, you can't unfairly allocate a huge amount of cost to one division versus the other. You have to be fair, right? And uh, some uh, divisions may not be able to bear the cost, right? So those are the things you have to consider when you um, allocate the period cost. So what is the supporting department? We also call it the service department. So these are the department provides the service that assist other internal department in the company. So they do not generate their own revenue. They are, they are not uh, directly involved with the operation, okay? The operating department, you also call it the production department. They are the department that directly adds value to a product or service. Supporting department just assist this um, production department. Um, <clears throat> so when you allocate cost, okay, the service department cost to production department, we will say, well, the cost pool, those costs to be allocated, those are the service department. And the target, the objects, where you are going to assign this cost to are the production department, okay? So you assign the cost from the service department to production department. So the service department is the cost pool and the production department is the cost objects. So under single rate method, you use single rate per unit of a single read, a single allocation base. You do not distinguish the fixed cost versus variable cost. So this method is easy, simple to implement. They treat fixed cost in a, in a similar manner to the variable cost. So the dual rate method, okay, in this case, they um, divide the cost with each cost pool into two categories, a variable cost pool and a fixed cost pool. And each pool uses its own cost allocation base. So they are treating fixed cost and the variable cost differently, right? And uh, this is more realistic, right? Because um, the cost allocation base for the variable cost versus fixed cost could be different, right? Uh, this way, you know, it's more realistic, but it's more complex to implement. So let's take a look at this example. So suppose the variable cost is 2.5 million, fixed cost is 3 million. <coughs> Excuse me. So <clears throat> um, the uh, cost allocation base we are using in this scenario is the IT hours. Okay, IT hours. And the capacity here is um, 12,000 IT hours. So <clears throat> if I do a quick calculation, um, my variable cost per IT hour so 2.4, 2.4 million divided by 12,000. So my variable cost uh, per IT hour is $200. So similarly, my fixed cost, 3 million divided by 12,000. So my fixed cost per IT hour is $250. So together, if I add them together, that IT hours is $450 per IT hours. So this is the budget, okay? Suppose 
the actual hours for the notebook division, okay? And for the other division, the hours is 9,000 and 3,000 respectively. So that's how this 12,000 hours uh, was actually allocated. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, um, these two divisions, notebook division and um, Fairfield's division, these two divisions are operating division. And uh, the cost of IT infrastructure, this one, uh, 5.4 million, that's the sum of 2.4 plus three. This is the period cost to be allocated. So I need to allocate uh, $5.4 million to these two divisions, notebook division versus the other division. So now if we only use a single rate, okay? So you use the 450, so that's the uh, total cost per hour because you use a single rate, right? Times the actual IT hours. So 9,000 for notebook, 3,000 for the other. So I can calculate this allocation and remember the two numbers has to add up to 5.4 million. So that would be the single rate. Okay, now dual rate. Okay, dual rate. So dual rate here, the fixed cost, you use the budget hours. Okay, the actual cost, you use the the variable cost, you use the actual IT hours, okay? So now you can see for dual rate, we need to calculate the fixed cost allocated, variable cost allocated, okay? So <clears throat> in this case, notebook division, we can see that the budget IT hour uh, 8,000, so this is the, the cost allocation base for the fixed cost. Okay, so 8,000, 4,000, these two are the cost allocation base for the fixed cost. And 9,000, 3,000, these are the cost allocation base for the variable cost, okay? So therefore, um, I'm able to allocate my $3 million fixed cost, right? Two million for notebook, one million for the other. <clears throat> and also my variable cost, 2.4 uh, million. So 1.8 for variable and um, 600,000 for the other. <clears throat> So the point is that this allocation eventually has to add up to 5.4 million, right? So this number has to add up to this total cost to be allocated. So now you can see that it's 3.8 total cost to notebook, 1.6 to the other division. Okay, so single rate so versus one, this is a single rate, right? 450 per IT hour, 450 per IT hour, this is a single rate. And that is you, that is with the actual hours. Here, you have two rate, right? 250, Two hundred fifty. This is the fixed cost per IT hour. Two hundred. This is the variable cost <clears throat> per IT hour. So you have these two rates. <clears throat> so now, uh, 
let's talk about uh, how to <clears throat> allocating support cost to production department. So <clears throat> the cost allocated is based on three alternatives, direct method, step-down method, reciprocal method. So I'm going to use one example to explain um, how this different method um, will affect the calculation. So this is from the textbook E15-20. Um, we have this question. So Phoenix Partners provides management consulting service to government and a corporate client. So basically, <clears throat> The government and the corporate, these two are the revenue generating division, operating division. Uh, they have two support departments. One is called admin service, AIS. The other one is the information system. So that's the IIS, okay? And the two operating department is the government and the corporate. So the idea is you have two supporting department. One is admin, the other one is IT, okay? So IIS, AI, uh, AIS. You have two operating department. One is government, the other one is corporate. For the first quarter of the year, the company record the following, right? So what we can see here, um, so budgeted overhead cost before and interdepartment cost allocation. So here you can see the cost for the support division AIS is 600,000. For IIS is 24, um, sorry, 2.4 million. Together, this is a $3 million cost. And the idea here is we need to allocate this $3 million cost to the operating uh, division, government, and corporate. So how to allocate that $3 million between government and the corporate? So that's that's the question, right? And uh, we have more information. Oh, this cost um, is just the operating cost. Um, this two number, 8756 million, uh, 12, Meaning these two numbers are the cost within their uh, government or corporate department. So support work supplied by AIS. So this AIS will support not only government, corporate, operating department, but also support IIS. So that percentage is 25% for IIS, 40% for government, 35% for corporate. So together you add them up, that's your 100%, okay? So this is the work supplied by AIS. And the work supplied by IIS that is used <clears throat> by 10% for AIS. Okay, so apparently the AIS department, they will also need a computer support, right? So 10% and the 30% of the government, 60% to corporate. So this numbers 10, 30, 60, add up to 100. So first let's take a look at the direct method. So this is most widely used because it's simple, okay? So you just allocate support cost directly to the operating department. Basically, you ignore any uh, services services rendered between the support division. Okay, so the idea is AIS, AIS, I just assume that they do not support each other. So I'm only allocate my service um, cost to the department, to the uh, uh, productive department, right? Operating department. I'm just assuming that I didn't do any work for the other other uh, support service division. 
So in this case, <clears throat> so for AIs, I will only apply, normally you would say, well, it's 25, 40, 35, right? Together is 100. But I just now ignored the work AIs data to IIs. It's 25%, I ignore that. So I'm only allocating the cost of AIs to government and the corporate based on this relative percentage, 40, 35, okay? So basically 40, 35 together, that's 75. So I know the weight, the weight would be 40 over 75 to the government, 35 over 75 to the corporate. The same the idea for the work provided by IIs. So this is what it looked like, okay? So when I'm allocating AIs, is six hundred thousand dollars. I do not allocate anything to IIs zero here. I only allocate six hundred thousand to government and the corporate. So in this case, the the relative proportion is based on uh, forty over seventy, thirty five over seventy five. Okay. So because you know this. To share the cost. So the weight, the weight would be 40 over 75, 35 over 75. So together they will share 100 percent of the 60,000. So based on the calculation, so the government takes uh, 320,000, corporate takes 280,000. So now let's take it to let's take a look at the IIS. 2.4 million. So again, I ignore the service I provided to the AIs. So I allocate nothing to AIs. I only allocate to government and the corporate. So in this case, the percentage is 30%, 60%. So the weight of the allocation would be 30 over 90, 60 over 90. So my allocation is a third to government, 800,000 and two thirds to corporate 1.6 million. Then I add up the numbers. So I need to allocate 1.12 million to government, 1.88 million to corporate. If you add these two number up, 1.12 plus 1.88, you get $3 million. That is how this to be allocated. Okay, so this method is Straightforward is simple to apply. The second approach is called a step down method. Okay, it's also called a sequential method. So the idea is we partially recognize the mutual cost of service provided by one support department to the other. How you allocate the support cost? You allocate it in a ranked sequential order. Okay. This one is more complicated. Okay. This one is more complicated. So let's take a look how this works. So in step down method, you have to decide the, the ranked order, okay? So let's say we allocate AIs first, okay? We allocate AIs first. So AIs, the total cost is $600,000. So I'm going to allocate based on the 25%, 40%, 35%, okay? So now I am allocating um, cost to IIS, right? So I'm allocating $150,000 to IIS because that's the 25% of 600,000. So now <clears throat> government have 240,000, corporate have 210,000. So now I'm done with IIS. AIs, right? 
So the next is going to allocate IIS. But now the cost of IIS is not 2.4 million. You have to consider this allocate, allocated 150,000. You add these two up. So the total cost to allocate it by IIS is 2.55 million. So 2.4 plus 150,000. So that's the 2.55 million. So now when you allocate this, you allocate them based on, um, you only allocate this to government and the corporate, right? You don't, you don't allocate it back to AIs, right? Because you just finished the AIs. Um, but now you, you only allocate whatever this amount to government and corporate based on the relative percentage. Okay, so you can see that this 10% will not be relevant, right? If you pick um, AIs as the first order. So when you take a look, so the government get 1.09 million, the corporate get 1.91 million. So together that's the three million, right? So uh, when you do a question, make sure you double check at the end of the day, right? That two number has to add up to uh, the three million, right? 600 plus 2.5 million. So that's the $3 million. <clears throat> so this is how you um, allocate AIs first under step down method. What about you allocate AIs first, not AIs first, allocate IIs first. So you allocate IIs first. So now you allocate 2.4 million based on 10%, 30%, 60%, okay? And now um, you actually allocated 10% of 2.4 million to uh, AIs, right? <clears throat> so, and then government 720,000, corporate 1.44 million. So after you're done with this uh, IIs allocation, you have to do with AIs. So for AIs now, you can see the cost is 600,000 plus 240,000. So now it's 840,000. Uh, when you allocate 840,000, you do not allocate it to IIS because you finished with IIS. So this 25% information is irrelevant here. So now <clears throat> you allocate 840,000 based on 4035, okay? allocate this to government and corporate. So in this allocation, you get 1.168 million to government, 1.832 million to corporate. These two add up to three million, just different allocation numbers. Okay, so the last one, uh, last approach is called Resi protocol method, okay? So this one, we will fully recognize the mutual service provided among the support department. So in the step-down method, right, we only partially recognized the uh, services provided by one department to the other, right? But the real life is, you know, it's a mutual, right, service. So A, support department did for B, and the B also did for A, right? A support B, but B also support A. So to fully recognize this mutual service, um, we have to use a simultaneous equation. Um, maybe it sounds a little bit uh, very, very tough, but it's not really. It's pretty, also it's, it's, it's doable, right? It's doable. So basically the idea is that we're gonna set up this simultaneous equation and then we're gonna figure out what's the cost for each department, for each um, supporting department, okay? 
So this is the equation in our example. So we are not picking any order, right? We are not saying A is first or I is first. In this case, they are simultaneously, okay? Simultaneously, that means I will have two variables and two equations. So I assume that the cost for AIS should be AIS. The cost for IIS should be IIS, right? So for AIS, my cost is 600,000 K <coughs> plus 10% of IIS. My IIS is <coughs> $2.4 million plus 25% of AIS. Right. So you have these uh, two equations, you have two unknowns, right? You have two unknowns, two equations, so you should be able to solve AIS and IIS, right? <clears throat> so once you solve that, right, once you solve that, you will be able to allocate to the, the garment and the corporate, right? So um, this one is kind of like the high school algebra, right? High school algebra, you're gonna able to figure out two variables in two equation, right? So that's how you do it. You get what is AIS, okay? And then what is IIS. And then um, you are going to, uh, you are going to, you know, uh, use the read to allocate these costs, okay? Okay, so um, if we summarize the E15 to 20, I'm, I'm gonna leave this to you, okay? Um, you will use direct, different approach, right? Direct method. Uh, step down AIS, step down IIS. The point that I mentioned that it's very important that you know that doesn't matter which way you use, the the two has to add up to uh, three million, right? The two has to add up to three million. Um, <clears throat> And how are you gonna de determine the sequence in the step down method, right? So you think about should I go with AIS or IIS, right? So how should you, how will you do that? Um, <clears throat> so there are different approach A, B, C. Um, so in the exam, I will not ask you to decide which order to go. So basically, I will uh, tell you which, which order first, okay? But it's good to know that, you know, there are different ways to determine the uh, the order in the step-down method. You can go with the percentage of the service. So in that case, the mean data, 25% to information system, information system only data 10% to the mean, so therefore we can pick the min to, to be the first, right? <coughs> oh, the dollar amount. So uh, information system, the total cost to allocate is 2.4. The min is 600,000. So we can go with the greater amount, right? So this will be the one. Or you can say, what about the, uh, allocated amount, the cost to, the mutual support cost to each other. So you calculate the cost uh, information system to the mean is 240,000. And uh, the mean service to information system is only 150,000. So you go with this, right? So either way, these different criteria I highlighted with the blue color, it just to help you to figure out which one to go first under the step down method. Like I said, in the exams, I will not ask you to decide which one to go first. I will ask you, 
Okay, I will, I will, I will give you the information. <clears throat> uh, allocating common costs. So the common cost, <clears throat> so maybe, you know, different users um, maybe share the same facility activity, they will get a cheaper price, right? The idea is the more user, <clears throat> The cheap, it's cheaper, right? The incremental cost is lower. Um, so how are you gonna allocate a common cost, right? So to each user, right? So you know that the more user added, the common cost will be lower, right? So how are you gonna allocate that common cost to each individual users? So the method, there are two methods, uh, standalone cost allocation method, incremental cost allocation method. So this method, you are not, this should be not surprising to you. If you have taken uh, intermediate financial accounting one, right, um, in terms of revenue recognition, sometimes uh, <clears throat> you have a, a basket of um, products, you have to, uh, allocate the revenue to each product or to each performance obligation, right? So in that case, you use these two approach, standalone versus incremental, right? So, <clears throat> so for standalone uh, approach, so you know um, <clears throat> the standalone cost for each user. For A is 80, for B, standalone means on its own, right? So if A on its own, the cost will be 80. If B and C on its own, the cost will be 10. So when I add up the three numbers, it's 100. But if the three users go together, the cost is not $100, it's lower, it's 95. So you save, save a fair percent because you have multiple users. So now uh, you're gonna calculate the uh, relative weight, okay? So what is the relative weight? So A is 80 versus total 100. So A is 80%, B, B is 10%, C is 10%, right? So now I'm going to use the package cost, 95, times the relative percentage. So I will figure out uh, how much cost to allocate for each uh, product, each user. So this would be my uh, standalone cost allocation method. So I think you have seen this before. Um, <clears throat> now incremental cost allocation method. So first, Let's take a look, right? Standalone, okay, standalone. That means if you add up the numbers, it, these numbers are the standalone, right? So you add up the three standalone, that's 100. But if two users go together, that price will be, it's gonna cost you normally, right? 80 plus 10. So that'll be 90, so you save $1, right? And then if you use three users, so that'll be A, B, C, it would be 100, but, and then you save $5. So the rank is, if A is picked, A will go with 90, okay? And then B, B will take the difference, right? Because B normally is 10, but here, two users, that's 89. So B will take the difference between um, between 89 and 80, so that's $9. So B normally should be 10, but here that $1 discount is applied to B, right? Because B at a lower, lower rank. And now C, okay, C, um, 
will pay the incremental. So from uh, 85, 89 to um, 95, right? That's a $6 difference, right? So, <clears throat> so C will take uh, even better discount, right? So you can see that um, together, 80, nine, six, less than 95, right? If there's two, so 80 plus nine, so that's 89. Um, <clears throat> so the idea is, um, so if your rank, your rank order is lower, you probably get a better deal, right? Because normally it's 10 and now you only pay six, right? 